Karlo Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shah Bahashem Rakakadash, double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well over the flock. Shalom, my salutations to you brothers out here. Personal words of truth and sincerity. Shalom to the hopeful elect. Shalom. And I'm just going to go briefly, briefly, briefly through some scriptures that I wrote down or have down here. And um, precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little and there a little. Revelations, the third chapter, the verse 15, says, I know thy works, thou art neither hot, cold, nor hot. I would, thou wert cold or hot. Then you go to the Revelation 3 and 1, it says, And unto the church, and unto the angel of the church of Sardis write, These things saith he that hath the seven spirits of Yahweh, and the seven stars. I know thy works, that thou hast a name. That thou livest and art dead. So to understand the works is talking about when you're coming to this word, when you're revived and when you begin to believe, you show forth works that coincide or hand in hand with the amount of faith you have. The scriptures, uh, Paul speaks about you are measured with faith. Each man is measured with their amount of faith some men more than others which is perfectly normal okay but the scriptures also tell you as i'm gonna get later on mark that perfect man and so you're looking for men that have faith and you're looking for um men that show their faith through their works because it's almost like boiling up inside of you it has to be it has to come out and so as was written John as John the Revelator wrote to the house of Sardis or the angel of the church um, told him to write it says that thou hast a name I know thy works that thou hast a name that thou livest and are dead so you can be living and have your name set up but you can be spiritually dead walking around spiritually dead that's where this whole walking dead understanding comes from all right, there's zombies on this earth, but the zombies are not, you know, what you think from watching Walking the Walking Dead. The zombies are spiritually dead Israelites, ones who have fallen from from understanding, which we all did, but that spirit wasn't given back to them. As Ephesians two and one, and you hath and you hath he quickened, who were dead. In trespasses and sin. Now, let's see if I can find a good definition or a good uh, quicken. Let's see, quicken. Let's see, to quicken. Let's see what kind of definition I get. If I get one at all. Because the Lord, it says here, you have a quickened. Make or become faster or quicker to accelerate, speed up, step up, hurry up. It says stimulate or become stimulated. So to activate, the Lord activates us. All right, it says strengthen, reanimate. We're reactivated, we're revived. You have the word revived. All right, and that's why it's known as a revival. All right, to restore to life or consciousness. So the Lord revived us and restored us. To consciousness, Ephesians 2, verse 1. And you have he quickened, who were dead in trespasses and sins, where in time past you, were, you walked according to the course of this world. So the actions that were congruent with you being asleep before you were quickened, your actions were congruent with the world. And that's why we com continue to profess our uh, uh, enmity, with the world we continue to um condemn the actions of the world and it's the people in the world it's the leaders in the world it's the false prophets in the world it's the lies deceit that come that are being pushed and flourished in the world i read a quote today that somebody said Amer the way the world works is basically they lie to us we know they're lying to us. They know that they know, we know that they're lying to us. 
they continue to lie and we continue to believe, act as if um, we don't know that they lie. So it's all an act, man. People are obviously under a deep spell <laughs> to 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 allow somebody to lie to you and just act like it's normal. It's all a lie. It's all a big lie. Who you are, your nationality, if that matters. Um, the Lord's plan on earth is is does the Lord exist? What they're telling you are lies, and they're feeding you more lies. So that's why truth has to flourish, you know, through the air, through the mouths of the Lord's men. Revel back to Revelation three verse fifteen. It says, "I know thy works that thou art neither hot, cold, nor hot. I work that work." I would that were cold or hot. So it's dealing with your actions. He would that you would be either freezing cold. You don't have any works at all. Nothing to show for your faith. Or completely on fire hot. Like your works speak for themselves. And that's all it is. It's like a building a reputation. All right. Men, certain reputable men in the scriptures. We know them. And we recite them because of their works. Because the faith that they had was shown through their works. It says, So then, because thou art lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth, because thou sayest, I am rich, and increased with goods, and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched, and miserable, and poor, and blind, and naked, as two-thirds of our people remain to this day, including the false prophets and their, their groups. Verse 18, I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich in white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with eye salve, that thou mayest see. Thou mayest see what? What is to come? All right, the will of the Heavenly Father. When you go to Isaiah 55, Let's go to Isaiah 55, verse 1. Ho, everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters. And he that hath no money, come ye buy and eat. So it's not talking about physical money. Because the Lord is requiring men with no money to come and buy. So it's not talking about anything that you're going to physically have in your hand. It's talking about the things of the spirit. This wisdom, this knowledge, and this understanding. When verse 18 says, I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich. It's talking about spiritual gold. Spiritual gold. And white raiment that thou mayest be clothed. It's talking about spiritual raiment. White, white means purity in the scripture. Alright. So, when you go back to Isaiah 55, verse... One ho, oh, everyone that thirsts, if come ye to the waters, that's this word, living waters. And he that hath no money, come ye, buy and eat, come, yea, come and buy wine and milk without money and without price. You can't buy milk and wine and water in this society without money. But the milk, water, and honey and, and wine are these scriptures. Are the words that are written in the Bible words that we are to live by words that guide us words that quicken us revive us all right Matthew 13 and 44 <clears throat> then slack you Matthew 13 and 44 says again the kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure hid in a field the which when a man hath found he hid he hideth and for joy he goeth and selleth all that he hath and buyeth that field. So this is what the kingdom of heaven likened unto, a treasure. And that's why we're reading about men treating this word as treasure. When you go to John chapter 4 and 14, it says, But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. Imagine never being thirsty again. Well, that's what this living water, this word, is to our souls. Our souls become, uh, you know, well taken care of and well nourished through this water, this word. But the water that I shall give him shall be in 
him as a well of water springing up into everlasting life and no true you know no water from the earth can give you everlasting life but the waters from on high this these scriptures this understanding which causes one to change their ways be quickened in the spirit and leadeth them into the way of understanding which leadeth into salvation and righteousness verse this is isaiah 55 and 2 wherefore do you spend money for that which is not bread and for your labor for that and your labor for that which satisfieth not hearken diligently unto me and eat ye that which is good and let your soul delight in its itself in fatness so this is what is good it's what is the lord have to give to us in the days to come what the lord has to give to us in the future the future prophecies and promises concerning the nation of israel um verse 3 incline your ear and come unto me here and your soul shall live that's that quickening from ephesians 2 it says so all you have to do is hear incline your ear it starts with hearing faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the words of the lord and you have to have men the teachers set up to teach you according to the bible not according to modernization times not according to christianity doctrines all right not according to anything that's pc culture but the hardcore truth of the bible all right which is not always the easiest pill to swallow it says or else everyone would do it incline your ear and come unto me here and your soul shall live and I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David. Okay, we all know that David was uh, forgiven for many for his sins, murder, adultery, and because the, he was a man after the Most High's heart, and the Lord basically had mercy on this king, and that's the type of mercy that we need upon us. So I gotta go back to Revelations thirteen. I left off uh, Revelations 3 and matter of fact 18, but I want to read 2 Corinthians 5 and 3. This is 2 Corinthians 5 verse 3. <clears throat> it says, if, it, if so be that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. So that's the understanding of having white raiment that thou mayest be clothed and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear when you have this clothed when you're clothed with purity all right when you're clothed with righteousness when you're clothed with understanding you don't appear naked before the heavenly father see you don't actually have to take your clothes off to become naked you can be spiritually naked before the heavenly father and so when you are clothed with that white raiment instead of those dirty garments where you can see right through well the Lord sees you appear righteous in his eyes. It says, and anoint thine eyes with eyes out that thou mayest see. And sight is um, important to a land of blind men. Our people are blind, they're, they're naked, and they're poor, as the scriptures say. Poor, blind, and naked, and miserable, and wretched. All right, so let's go to um, the next verse. As many as I love, I rebuke. So that's understanding the Lord right there. He's like a father. That's why we call him Father. Abba. All right. That's why he's when we say our father prayer, speaking about Yahweh, the highest, the creator. And so as many as he loves, he rebukes. And chasten. All right. To chasten somebody means to correct them. All right. Sometimes fiercely, sometimes, you know, with appropriate measure. The Lord always corrects the ones he loves, always throughout the scriptures. Whoever you're reading about, Yahweh Shah himself, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, all the prophets of old, Job, all right, uh, Jonah, you know, all the men, uh, Daniel, Isaiah, all the men were chastised in order to uh, put them right back on the path where the Lord wants them. So this is the book of Job 5, verse 17. It says, Behold, happy is the man whom Yahweh correcteth. So you have to be understand that your correction, the correction doesn't uh, feel great. 
but it's after you, you'll be thankful to have a father around to sh correct you and everyone else is allowed to you know go outside at eight years old and s smoke weed and, and mess around on the streets and hang out on the corners with the with, with the pimps and the hustlers your father might have said nah that's not for you you coming inside and you doing on your school you're working on your schoolwork well that's correction that over time you're going to see the blessing in that and when over time you're going to see the fault in the other children's parents not correcting them well that's the same situation scenario here all over again we're still children to the heavenly father i don't care how old you get i don't care it doesn't matter your age you're still a child in the eyes of the heavenly father you're one of his children you're one of his princes yasha allah so verse 17 in Job 5 and 17 behold happy is the man whom yahweh corrective therefore despise not thou the chastening of the almighty don't hate that the lord is correcting you don't just hate it just learn to deal with it learn to see the the benefit and the fruits of that correction of those stripes it says for he maketh sore and bindeth up he woundeth in his hands make Whole. He shall deliver thee in six troubles, yea, in seven there shall no evil touch thee. And this is going into all of the um, persecution that's going to come upon the earth and the judgments from on high. And Israel is going to get caught up into these judgments. Now, the elect is going to be purified through these judgments. The rest of them is going to be destroyed from these judgments because they don't have any deliverance out of them. The Lord said he shall deliver thee in six troubles. So the ones that um are happy at his correction the ones that believe in him yea in seven there shall be no shall no evil touch thee and it goes on to the types of destru uh, destruction including famine all right and different various plagues that the lord is going to send upon the earth so back to um verse 19 here it says as many as i love i rebuke and chasten be zealous therefore and repent so repentance is to feel sorry for what you've done. And until you return to the Lord humbly and know your faults. And you can't know your faults unless you know uh, your transgressions. You can't know your transgressions unless you understand sin. You can't understand sin unless you understand what is sin, transgression of the law. You don't understand the law and perfectly unless you understand who the law was for. So it all goes back to who the law was for. Who the people of the Lord are. Who the Lord's talking to. Who the Bible was written for. Who are these people? James, John, uh, uh, you know, Amos. Who are these people? Ezekiel, Zephaniah. Who are these men? Who are they talking to? Israelites. All right. This is Hebrews 12 and 5. It says, And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. See? The Lord talked to us like children. We are in his, in his sight, no matter how grown you are, are a child. It says, my son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. All going back to the point. If the Lord love you, if he delivers you as children, he corrected you, he wounds you, but he bound you up. All right, he may knock you down, but he'll help you get right back up. Got to understand that's what a father's role is, all right, to protect his child, not just persecute him. And that's how the Lord watches over us. Verse 20, behold, I stand at the door and knock. How was the Lord doing this? Through his men, through his prophets. He set up watchmen in the book of Ezekiel to watch over our souls. He set up elders. He set up the apostles to watch over our souls. These are men who have been through the fire many times they can tell us exactly what the lord requires of his men they can tell us how often you know you go through certain afflictions and what type of afflictions you're going to catch because they themselves have caught them caught them too so the lord said behold i stand at the door and knock and that knocking is the voice of the lord men crying on the corners right sighing and crying for the abominations done in the midst of the city Babylon, America. You go to Song of Solomon, chapter 5, verse 2. It says, I sleep, 
but my heart wake, my heart waketh. It is the voice of my beloved that knocketh, saying, Open to me, my sister, my love, my dove, my undefiled. For my head is filled with dew, and my locks with the drops of the night. So that understanding of opening our knock at the door, that's always about wisdom. That's always about knowledge and understanding of the Bible. This word being pushed out from the, through the four corners of the earth is the Lord's way of knocking at the door. It says, if any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in, in, in to him and will sup with him, like eat with him, and he with me. So the Lord's going to deal with you. The Lord's going to dine with you. And you're going to get all of the uh, revival that's promised. You're going to be restored. You're going to get that restoration. You're going to be quickened, as we read in Ephesians, the second chapter. Now, John 14. Let's go to John 14. In 23, it says, Yahweh shall answer and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words. And my father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. See, the Lord wants to make his abode with you. But first you got to repent. First you got to open that door. First you got to hear his words. You know how many men just scoff at the words? They won't even get past the fact that who said what and... You know, how things were in the ancient world, and they just can't get past the words. It's the words that they deny. So you already appreciating and learn to um, take, not take the words of the Lord lightly. It already means you you in the good graces with the Heavenly Father. You, you're able for the Lord to come in and sup with you now. You will be revived. You have a chance at um, salvation. Which is all we, we hope for in this day. Alright. So uh, it says to him that overcometh. <clears throat> will I grant to sit with me in my throne. Even as I also overcame. And am set down with my father. In his throne. So this is how Shah speaking. It's written in red. It says. He that hath in the ear let him hear. What the spirit saith unto the churches. So that's the bottom line. That's what it's about. This is what the Lord requires for his men to come in, deal with him, sup with him, learn his ways, learn his word, deal with his rebuke, deal with his chastisement, because it's all for a better outcome in the end. Now, let's go to Sirach 8 and 9. Miss not the discourse of the elders, for they also learned of their fathers and of them shall thou learn understanding and to give answer as need require so you're supposed to deal with the discourse what is discourse discourse means verbal interchange of ideas especially conversation so this is the verbal exchange of conversation the lessons the classrooms the sit downs the teachings the street teachings of the elders don't miss them. Tune into them. But they are also learned their fathers. Who did they learn from? Elder uh, 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 Elder Ariyah, High Priest Ariyah, King Masha, right? uh, Abba Bivens from the 70s, men from the, teaching from the 70s, late 60s, all the way up into the, to the 80s, while we was children, 90s, to the 2000s, to the 2010s, now we in the 2020s. Still going strong. These men have learned from their fathers passed down. Their elders passed down. And of them thou shalt learn understanding. And to give answer as need requireth. So the understanding that we learn in all these white garments. are this That's that water that we buy in. That's that wine that we're buying. That is these richly things that we're buying. So that we can't won't be naked in the sight of our Lord. And we won't be... Uh, you know, destroy the tribulation cometh upon the earth. Let's go to Romans 15, Romans 16 and 17. All right, let's go to Romans 16 and 17. It says, Now I beseech you, brethren, beseech means beg, 
Mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned. So automatically, once you learn this doctrine, don't be in the spirit of well, everybody keep don't be in this, don't be caught out there in in another doctrine of unity everything, unity everything. Well, even the ones that don't believe need to even the ones that don't believe we gotta link up with and listen, that that that's a spell that's out here, man. Remember, once you come into this truth, you gotta put off the old man. Alright? The old man wants everybody to get along, wants all the peace. No, you have to mock them, which cause division and offenses contrary, contrary to the doctrine which you have learned. The man is teaching you that the mark of the beast is a corporation. That's contrary to the doctrine you learn. The man is teaching you that there's one antichrist which you are waiting for. That's contrary to the doctrine you learn. You learn that there are many antichrists. According to the scriptures, if a man teaches you that the time of Jacob's trouble is in close by and that we already went through it or that uh, it's not talking about actual, you know, here in America or, you know, we're just going to walk into the king, stroll into the kingdom of heaven, you know, without any afflictions. Well, that's divisions uh, contrary to the doctrine which you have learned. You got to mock that person, meaning stay away from them. Meaning stay away from them. It says, and avoid them. Well, that's why you mark them. You mark them so you can watch more of their videos. And, you know, we going to watch the haters videos regardless. Just to see what kind of lie, more spewing of lies. But we already have them marked. We're already avoiding them. It's not as if we're trying to, you know, learn something new from them. Acts 15 and 1. And certain men which came down from Judea. Taught the brethren and said, Except ye be circumcised after the manner of Moses, you cannot be saved. This was a big thing dealing with uh, Israel back during the time of um, uh, Paul and uh, his teaching amongst the Gentiles, Israelite foreigners of uh, Asia Minor, and the churches all throughout. And Paul will go, as in this case, certain men of uh, that came down from Judea, so they was probably from Jerusalem area, and they taught that you have to be circumcised after man of Moses, you can't be saved. Now, salvation deals with faith, which we know, you are saved through faith. If you are not saved through faith, you know, you cannot save, if you're saved through faith, the you can't be saved through the law, all right, because first and foremost, you got to keep the law 100%, and because we're not able to do that, you cannot be saved through the law. So you got to be saved through faith in the blood of Yahweh Shah and believe in the resurrection as well. And so that was the old um, way in which, you know, Israel was accustomed to dealing. All right. But then once Yahweh Shah came, he he um, he broke apart that wall of uh, division amongst Yahweh and, and his children, Yahweh, uh, Israel, Yahweh Allah. That wall of separation. And he did that through his blood, which was a custom of ours for uh, forgiveness. You know, to sacrifice uh, a lamb without blemish spot. And um, so when men came to teach that, well, you have to be circumcised. They're basically teaching that, we, you know, the forgiveness through Yahweh Shah didn't exist or wasn't established. Or they just maybe they maybe they were part of the Sadducees that didn't believe in the resurrection and whatnot. All right, and so Paul had to put that to a stop. That's an example of Romans sixteen and seventeen, marking them which cause division and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you have learned and avoid them. And so this thing happened many times throughout the scriptures, especially the New Testament. And so we're following suit. It's nothing uncommon what is happening to this day with men teaching all types of wayward doctrines. You just mark them. Once you hear a man teach like that, you mark them and avoid them. It's simple. 1 Corinthians 5 verse 9. I wrote unto you in an epistle not to company with fornicators. All right, Paul, write that. Because... There's men that are in the church, and there are men that are out the church. There's men that are in the faith, 
is men that are out the faith. And so your company, companionship, remember, companionship is like being a, when you're in a company of people, you know, birds of a feather flock together. Basically, they rub off on you. Iron sharpens of iron. And well, it works the same way with, uh, with wickedness, you know. And so once you come into this truth, you have to, as verse 7 says, 1 Corinthians 5 and 7, Purge out therefore the old leaven, that you may be a new lump, as you are unleavened. So you got to get rid of that old, them old ways, that old way of life. When you're quickened to the new way of life, the old way of life is in the past now. And so while you're amongst these same people, you got to remember you're different. You're, you have changed. You have been quickened. So your spirit is not the same as it used to be. It used to, con it used to condone it. Now it condemns that very same act, whatever they're doing. And so Paul simply wrote, I wrote unto you in an epistle not to company with fornicators. What is a fornicator? It's somebody who worshiped different idols. Somebody who is an idolater. And he goes on to talk about verse 11. But now I have written unto you not to keep company if any man that is called a brother or be a fornicator or covetous or an idolater or a railer or a drunkard or extortioner such with such and one, not, know not to eat. You don't even sit down to eat these men. Now, these is men that you might call a brother. So, that marking the perfect man is a real thing. And, and it has to be done for your, for your safety. For your salvation purposes. It's nothing personal. Right? When, when, when somebody gets killed out here in the drug game, they say, look, it was business. It's nothing personal. Well, guess what? With the Lord is when when it comes to your salvation, it should be business and nothing personal. Sorry, bro, I I I can't come out today, man. You man want to go get drunk and wild out in the city? Look, bro, you, you got it, man. I'm gonna just chill out home today. It's that simple, man. It really is, because you understand that that's not the that's not the style that you went to. All right, that's that old man, and that brother hasn't purged fully that old man yet. And purged out all of the old leaven, that little leaven, leaven if the whole lump. You gotta get rid of the whole leaven. You leave a little bit, it's still leaven. All right, and let's go back to King James. Um, it's like it. Romans sixteen, <clears throat> eighteen. For they that are such serve not our Lord, Yahweh but their own belly, and by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. <clears throat> How can that be that a simple person can be in this truth? Well, just because you, when you come in this truth, first of all, you're a newborn babe and your spirit is not, you know, ready in, to discern from the truth from the lies. Your spirit is still interested in what sounds good. I mean, your, your flesh, your flesh is still into that, you know, good words and fair speeches. And so if you're not, uh, marking and avoiding certain men purposely for your salvation, just like you would if a nigga came up to you and said, yo, take a hit. You would avoid that nigga, but if you're not avoiding men who speak contrary to the doctrine you learned, then this, their smooth words and speeches are going to deceive you. And you're going to think they're, they're about this word, but really they're about filling their belly. They're about getting paid. All right, everybody getting paid. They'll teach any doctrine for if it, if it means you get some more cash. This is Philippians 3, verse 19. Whose end is destruction, whose God is in their belly, is their belly, and whose glory is in their shame, who mind earthly things. So, to be honest, these people are not even thinking spiritually at all. They're completely carnal. They're serving the lust of the flesh. And without with the love of money is the root of all evil. So in order to please the flesh, you got to get paid, right? The pleasures of this world are sensual as hell. They're, they're, they're tangible. They're physical. Lamborghinis, Rolls Royce, trips to the Mafia Coast, flying private jets, everything that seems to be uh, uh, physical, man, you know, materialistic. 
is what brings a lot of people joy and pleasure. And if you're serving that side and not the spiritual side, you're serving the flesh. Well, you're going to want to get some bread. You're going to want to get some money. And that's why the scripture says whose end is destruction. Because these people have forgotten about the hope of the Lord. They've forgotten in their hope why they walk their walk. These people have been back entangled back with the world. And now they're serving their belly or they're serving their lusts. Because your belly is a, uh, also a symbol of greed. It says whose glory is in their shame and who mind earthly things. All right. The earthly things is everything that they can have from lying to your ass to get you to get them some bread. It's become this the being a pastor and a preacher for a long time has become a profitable thing. Long before America, it, it was made and turned into a profitable thing. When you look at the wicked Pharisees and Sadducees, the Lord said these men come with these gay garments or these come with their you know, brought in their phylacteries and they come with these beautiful garments on, arrayed in white, but they're open sepulchers inside. On the outside, they're beautiful and garments on and robes and magnificent looking in appearance, but in the inside, they're dead. And that's exactly what happens with these people. That's why the Lord said, whose end is this is destruction. If you want your end to be destruction, you're going to follow these people. Now the book of First Timothy, First Timothy's six and five. First Timothy six and five. It says, "Preserve pers perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds, and destitute of truth." Meaning you can't get truth if you're destitute of it. All right. But perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds. I mean, imagine you put some of the most filthiest minds in the world and hand them a Bible and tell them to break it down. What they're going to come up with. And then you're going to tell them, no, and they're going to tell them, well, look, you can say what you want. So I'm going to say what I want. That's not what the scriptures was about. Provident. Pro there is no private interpretation of the scriptures. There's no, no, your, no such thing as my own doctrine. Walking my own walk. <laughs> That's what Jake think. There's a personal Jesus. Well, my Jesus, no, no, there's no such thing. It says in destitute of truth, meaning you can't speak a word, a lick of truth. There's men out here with Bibles in their hands, man. It says, supposing that gain is godliness from such withdraw ourselves. So everywhere you look in the scriptures, they're talking about, well, in the New Testament, it's particular, Paul's, Paul, here it is. Now, Timothy are speaking the same thing. It is two different men speaking the same thing, telling you that there's men out there who are about feeling they, they're about their greed. They determined that gain is godliness, meaning that what you wear, what you got on, you've heard men talk like that. That's a little leaven when a man talk like that. That's leaven. You know how much you got on. Look, we all like to be nice. When you taking it down to, uh, uh, well, I'm wearing, I ain't wearing YSL, I ain't wearing Givenchy. And we both in the same camp. Like, bro, I'm marking you, bro. I'm marking you. Little do you know I'm marking you, bro. I'm marking you. Because that's leaven, man. Ain't no, ain't, no, ain't no way in hell you supposed to tell me and we both in the same predicament, messed up, that I'm a lesser man or I'm not on no level because I ain't got Givenchy and, and um, I ain't rocking um, Armani. Man, you... you you're on a low level, man, if you're talking like that. Because what are the, what are you going to really reap from that? Besides attention from some whorish females or some niggas, what do you get? What do you gain? How much attention do you, whose attention do you really seek on this side? And don't get me wrong, man. You got money for nice things, buy nice things. Shit, spend your money how you want. If you want to save your money, go ahead and save it. You should, if anything, the Lord said, charge them that are rich in this world. So if you got bread talking about you wearing another bread for Givenchy and all this thing, I hope you tighten at the same time. I hope you give an arms at the same time. I hope you communicate with the elders at the same time. As it says here, 1st Timothy 6 and 18, that they do good. Charge 17, charge them that are rich in this world, that they be not high-minded. Uh, no trust in uncertain riches. Uh, 
but in the living power who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. The Lord gave you that stuff. You know, they ain't give you that stuff to gloat on the the, the glow and boast at me. That's the way of the world, man. I ain't no different than a rap video. It says that they do good, that they be rich in good works, ready to distrib distribute, willing to communicate. Which means communicate and distribute mean to basically give give um give alms, man. Do good deeds at your work. That's works, man. The Lord gave you all that bread. Guess what? It's a work to give. Charity is called. Charity cover a multitude of sins. Hey, if you was a wicked nigga and you charitable, there's room for you to uh for you to repent still. Right? <laughs> there's room for the Lord to have mercy on you. Back in um Romans 16 and I think I'm at verse uh 18 now. It says, For they are such, for they that are such serve. Not our Lord Jehovah's child, but their own belly, and by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. Your obediences come abroad. It says, For your obediences come ab abroad unto all men. I am glad, therefore, on your behalf, but yet I would have you wise unto that which is good and simple concerning evil. And Yahweh of peace, the power of peace, Shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. That's an interesting scripture or way of words. The grace of our Lord Yahweh shall be with you. Amen. So these are beautiful words to live by, beautiful words to go by, man. And I'm going to cut this video here. Lord willing, is that a fine? I'm going to come back with another, maybe a part two later. Shalom.